Firepower Threat Defense, Blocking NGROC. So NGROC exposes local servers behind NATs and firewalls uh, to the public internet over secure tunnels. It's very easy, you download NGROC, you connect your service, you access it from anywhere. We're gonna show this. So what's the big deal? Well, there's a couple of things. One is an adversary can certainly leverage this um, to their advantage and get access to systems even though you've got all these controls in place. The other issue is, is that users could actually do this too. If they wanted access to their asset and they didn't want a VPN in, they could actually go ahead, download NGROC, uh, forward 3389, so RDP, um, using the internet and tunnel that connection. And you can use TCP tunnels, you can use HTTPS uh, tunnels, and there's even WebSocket support as well. Okay, so maybe it costs money. Well, actually, there's a free account that you can use that'll certainly provide you the functionality that you need to connect. How NGROC is used maliciously. So look at all the warnings that are out there. There's certainly um, adversaries taking advantage of this. Um, like I said, you still have the internal community, uh, your users that may access this application um, and maybe you don't want it to happen. So here it's talking about multiple threat actors. So recently threat actors were seen using NGROC to expose several machines with victims network, making them visible to the outside world. Um, since the attacker had knowledge of the NGROC assigned public uh, addresses, obviously they can access those compromised systems. And so this service can be abused by threat actors to get unauthorized access to targeted networks, download payloads, exfiltrate credit card data, and crafting unique URLs. In addition, the tunneling service allows cyber criminals to evade detection. It can generate random URLs, making it harder to detect or block. Um, and we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna achieve that outcome here today. Recently, Iran-based APT Pioneer Kitten was found selling network credentials um, and, and Grok was used here. And then there's Fox Kitten was observed attacking US private and government sector um, organizations um, as well, leveraging NGROC. The bottom line is, this is maybe an application we don't wanna have available to our users. So how do we block it? How do we mitigate that, that risk? So maybe the first thing that we can do is let's try it and see it work going through our corporate firewall today. So here's NGROC, we're gonna for, forward TCP 3389 or we're gonna expose it so we can tunnel it over the internet. And so here it's ready to go. Um, I've created an account on NGROC. I got the free version. That's all I need. It gives me the URL and the port, and now I connect to it. And look at that. I'm coming over the internet through the firewall and accessing that machine. And I'm on it. Look at that. Connections, one. It's open. Crazy, right? Pretty simple. Download, install, that's it. Now we go ahead and open up Explorers just so we can expose that when we see it a little bit later um, when we reconnect here. So let's look at that. So we open up Explorer. This is the actual machine itself. Let's log in. And if everything's true, because now we're in the corporate network, look at that, there's NGROC. So a user could actually continue to work and not have to worry about VPNing in and bypass maybe additional controls. Okay, so that's from a user perspective. Obviously, an adversarial perspective, it's even worse. But let's go ahead and let's lock this down. But first, let's check out the logs and see that that connection actually came in. And so there's our time and there's the client application of NGROC. We can drill into this particular event here. We can see the responder IP. You can see 443 and we scroll across, we can see that the client application is um, exists and, and uh, it's very high risk. And then we can see the policy associated with it. So our goal here is to make the application not usable. But remember, one of the challenges were is that it's gonna come in using um, a URL that is dynamic and may change. So that might not be a good way of blocking it. We can block an IP maybe, but that's probably not gonna last very long. 
um, and it could be dynamic as well. So let's block ngrok, and how we're gonna do it is we're gonna block it based on application. So if we have the ability to see the application attempting to make that connection and, and uh, determine that it is ngrok, then, then we can mitigate that risk. So let's grab our attributes, our zones and networks, and let's get them defined as part of the policy. And that's all good. Let's go to application. Let's see if there is one for ngrok. And there is. So let's go ahead and add that to the rule. We'll turn on some logging. And we're gonna block with reset here. And we'll go ahead and actually, let's define the placement of the rule. Let's put it right at the top. We just wanna block this right out of the gate. Um, there's no use case for, our, uh, for this in our environment, whether you're adversarial or you're just a user trying to get uh, easy access to an asset or a developer as an example. Let's go ahead and push our deployment. This will take a, a minute or so. Once the deployment is done, we'll go ahead and give it a try. Let's go ahead and put in a reason for the deployment and grok blocking rule. That's what we're enabling here. So we'll go ahead and hit deploy. All right, now let's give it a try. Mm. Reconnecting. Look at it, it's trying a bunch of IPs. Resolved, still trying. It never connects, it fails. Let's check out our logs just to see. And I've got a custom search here, just looking at ngrok as the application and uh, the internal network, as well as zones are defined here. Just to get rid of some of the additional noise here. And look at that, there's a block with reset. There's the IP it was attempting. You can see there's many IPs that it was trying. Um, there's the client application, and we can see we're using HTTPS, and we can still block it.